today is the final day of the Mental Health Awareness Week 2020. And this year's theme is kindness. Those running the project believe that this could be the most important week they've ever hosted. But why kindness? Maybe it is because kindness has a certain power to inspire and to lift our spirits. Just think of a time when you were the recipient of someone's kindness, when a person went the second mile in order to bless you in some way. It might have been a, a gift or a card or a word of encouragement or some gesture of tangible love that was in one sense quite superfluous, but in another sense had the power for good over your emotions. Their kind word or act lifted your spirits. Julie was the glad recipient of a small tube of baking powder left on our front doorstep the other day by a friend who knew that Julie failed to buy it in the shops. One small act of kindness. <laughs> the Welsh cakes were wonderful. Or maybe you can think of some example of kindness that you showed to someone else. You did what you did quietly and unobtrusively. You didn't go around blowing a trumpet at your gesture. Look how kind I am. But nevertheless, you felt that deep sense of well-being and God's smile upon you. And your spirit was lifted by redirecting your focus from yourself onto the needs of someone else. Now, kindness really does have an amazing potential. It has the ability to unlock shared humanity, strengthen our relationships and develop our sense of community. We all witnessed that simple act of kindness by the then 99-year-old Captain Tom Moore, who walked the length of his garden 100 times to celebrate his forthcoming 100th birthday and also to raise some cash for the NHS. He aimed at raising £1,000 in sponsorship, but the current figure is £33 million and still rising. One small act of kindness, which caused an avalanche of reciprocal benevolence and kind-heartedness. People wanted to respond. It was good for them to do so. It was also good for the NHS. A few weeks later, Captain Tom turned 100 and he received 150,000 cards. And also an RAF fly past. He was appointed as honorary colonel and this week has been announced that he is becoming a knight of the realm, Captain Sir Tom Moore. Not a bad result for a stroll in your garden. Arise, Sir Tom. Not sure I wonder they'll ask him to kneel down or not. There's an amazing feel-good factor to raising national spirits through a simple gesture of kindness. It's quite contagious, isn't it? Earlier this week, at the start of Mental Health Awareness Week, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Justin Welby, was interviewed by religious affairs correspondent at the BBC, Martin Basher. It was a fascinating interview in which Justin uh, spoke of his own deep anxiety and struggles with depression. And he also spoke of the time when he and his wife lost their first child aged just seven months. It was brutally honest, utterly transparent and Christian leadership at its best. I've been a follower for, of Jesus now for about 43 years and I've witnessed many changing trends, not in the core beliefs of the Christian faith obviously, but in things like the way that people dress to come to church, the kind of music that we sing, uh, the way that we evangelize, less open air services, more alpha, and various other things. But the one change that really thrills me is the change of attitude to mental health. I can't provide any empirical data or surveys or statistics, but I do remember that back then, those who suffered with depression or mental illness um, were sometimes regarded as second-class Christians. There was a certain stigma to mental health. It was never actually said as such or a blatant calling out, but rather there was an implication that all they needed to do was to pray more or have more faith or claim the promises of God or be victorious, which although was well-meaning, I'm sure was actually very unhelpful as now they not only struggled with depression, but they told that there was something deficient in their faith. Very subtle, isn't it? Theologically dubious as well, as well as unhelpful. And I just want to say it's okay not to be okay. And that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you're a bad or deficient Christian in some way if you suffer from depression, you're not. 
obviously mental health isn't only about depression, but there are many reasons for poor physical health, for example, asthma to heart disease, to kidney failure, to diabetes, to cancer, to whatever. So too with mental health issues. There are all kinds of specific conditions that require very specific and special treatments. And just as you wouldn't treat angina and asthma in the same way, there are a whole range of treatments for various mental health conditions. And it's really important that we don't bunch them all together in some kind of general way under the title mental health. Many have spoken about lockdown as being detrimental to the country's mental health. And I guess what they're largely talking about are the effects of isolation and anxiety. I get that. There are days when I get out of bed and I feel as if there is a cloud over me and I can't put my finger on it why I'm feeling so blue because life is great and I'm blessed beyond measure. But I guess that some of you are experiencing that too. Now understandably, people are worried about financial issues and unemployment and reduced hours at work and health concerns and elderly family members and not being able to cuddle grandchildren at the moment and education and the effects of homeschooling very much as on the parents as much as the children and what the future will look like and many more things you see God made us body soul and spirit with physical emotional and spiritual needs if the reason for our anxiety is physical then we need medical treatment if it's psychological then we need psychological help there's no shame in that and thank God for medical science. The psalmist uh, once wrote, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including medical and psychological treatment and care. But coming back to our sense of anxiety being exacerbated through isolation and concerns of the future, there are things that we can do to help ourselves. I've already mentioned kindness. Whilst you can't make people be kind to you, you can show kindness in a thousand different ways to others, even by a simple telephone call. And as you take the focus off yourself and reach out to others, it has an amazing healing dimension and power. It's remarkable the way that one small act of kindness can actually breathe life into another person and also breathe life into the person who bestows the kindness. But let me also suggest another way that kindness can have an amazing effect upon us as Christians. And that is for us to reflect on the kindness of God. And this is so, so important. Reflect on verses such as Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. When God our Saviour reveals his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, given us new life and uh, new birth through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Take time to ponder on the kindness of God. Another great passage is found in Ephesians, particularly chapters 1 and 2. And if that doesn't raise your spirits, then check your pulse to make sure that you're still alive. Here's a suggestion for you. Though, read those verses and um, read them out loud several times. And then sit quietly and deliberate on their truths. And then try to memorize them so that we will have them with us throughout the day and through the night even when we don't have a bible available to us jesus is the good shepherd the one who has laid down his life for the sheep the one who knows his sheep by name the one who leads us beside peaceful streams and renews our strength he is the one who guides us along the right paths as we journey with him and he is the one who promises to be with us through the valley of the shadow of death we have therefore no reason to be afraid, for he is with us. There's a great song, you know it well. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it cha chases me down, fights till I am found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And we're going to conclude our service this morning by singing those words. 
and I would like you in your homes to sing along. Yes, be, not just because it's a catchy tune or a well-scripted uh, song, but because you too are overwhelmed and amazed at the never-ending, reckless love of God that you don't deserve and you couldn't earn. It's his kindness that never ceases to lift our spirits. Let us praise him together. No wall you won't kick down no 